Hello, everybody. It's Alan Hines here. Um, I got to start getting busy getting my YouTube channel off the ground. And uh, yeah, I thought about playing some hot licks and trying to um, get some of my uh, stuff out there and talk about gear and stuff. We can do that too. But what I want to do today. Uh, since I'm still in my pajamas, it's raining outside, very rare occurrence in um, California weather. Rain, how strange. But I want to talk about some of my pandemic projects. We all have them um, since the lockdown. Actually, I finished a CD right before the lockdown, so I'm pretty fortunate. I have a whole uh, new batch of music uh, that has now been mastered, and I'm really proud of this. Uh, it's my band. Matt Rohde and Travis Carlton and Donald Barrett. Um, we have Mike Finnegan, and Pat Bergeson, and uh, Lenny Castro, Russell Serrata, Jimmy Johnson, some great players um, joining us. And I'm really proud of this. And that's going to come out once the world opens up some. But to keep preoccupied beyond that mastering, which we finally finished, um, one of my pandemic projects has been like working on guitars and putting mutts together and finding old kind of forgotten guitars and adopting them and making them into usable instruments. Um, I find this really enjoyable to do. Now this guitar started off um, in a little store called Ventura Music and it was, it had been totally submerged in water I think for a while because the pieces had come apart, they glued it back together, the wooden was swollen beyond the, the uh, binding. Uh, it had this red finish, as you can see in the picture here, and I could chip it off with my finger. It would just like flake off. So I said, this might be a good candidate for refinishing. Should I send it off and pay lots of money for somebody else to do it? Why, when I can do it myself and I have all the time in the world? So, um, I figured this is not a, it's not a 59 Les Paul, it's a 79. And it's, um, you know, so it's not worth that much money. And so I couldn't think I, I could destroy the value too much. Some people might say that I did, but what the heck, I can always have it refinished correctly in the future. But what I did, I went to this place called Re-Ranch, uh, which is a company in Texas that sells uh, spray can um, paints um, based on the colors from Gibson and Fender back in the 60s and 50s. And I got the Pelham Blue, uh, and I figured, let's just redo some Pelham Blue. Now, a few things about Pelham Blue. They, I think in like the early 60s, Gibson painted over a lot of their flawed SGs with a Pelham Blue. So I've mostly only seen Pelham Blue on old SGs, unless it was a new guitar. And the blue on the new guitars never quite look right because they're not green enough. The old guitars would yellow with a nitrocellulose lacquer, I assume, that just kind of patinaed and turned the finish right, like an, almost like a Sherwood green. So when I ordered the paints from this place in Texas, I ordered the Pelham Blue. I also ordered some tinted amber uh, nitrocellulose clear coat, um, lacquer cover. And I just got the can, I said, what the heck? What have we got to lose? So I stripped down the guitar, you can, as you can see in these pictures, took everything off of them. I used a little straight, um, uh, like a mat knife blade, real high steel, you know, really thick steel, and just scraped off the paint, used a razor blade in places, I guess, and um, got it down to where it was pretty smooth, buffed it out a little bit, used a little light sandpaper just to make sure it was, it was you know, getting, got most of the lumps off of there. And then I just went outside, hung it up, and started spraying a combination of the blue and the tinted amber together and it kind of came out kind of nice it's, it's um a little bit darker blue than it would have been had i just used the uh, regular the the can by itself now what you have to do when you do this kind of thing now look like i said i wouldn't do this with a 59 or really valuable guitar but this guitar is worth a few thousand dollars and i figure what the heck i'm going to enjoy playing it if it has a different vibe so once i stripped it all down i taped off where i could like on the binding where it was straight i typed and i'd let it I didn't really worry about it on the front where it'd be really hard to try to tape that off. So I just sprayed over that too. I, you know, I taped off the, of course I masked being taped off the fretboard so you couldn't, so you could, so I didn't affect the ebony or the headstock. All the parts were off. And then I just, I went out one afternoon and I sprayed it. I didn't even wait for the coat to dry. I just kind of sprayed about four or five until the can was gone. I used a whole can of this. And um, I have to say, it looks pretty good. Now you paint the blue on first, with it, I was combining that with the amber to get it kind of green colored. And then when you give it a day to dry, you can go in with this little straight edge razor blade and you can kind of just trace along the, uh, you know, just leave about, you know, a quarter of an inch sticking out 
that's just the length of the um, the depth of the binding and you just kind of scrape the top and the, and the paint will scrape right off and that's how i got such a nice line um on a, on a lot of this guitar you know uh, so it came out pretty darn good considering it's just me doing it um so you spray that down and then it, i let it dry for one day and then i sprayed a few coats of clear coat and i was just like a clear lacquer and i sprayed that over the binding as well because i wanted that actually cover the binding cover with that kind of tinted uh, clear coat and then it's buffing it out and putting it back together and what you have is like yeah to a professional you're going to see little places where i may have missed a little bit but overall it's a pretty cool looking um les paul and the main thing is it sounds awesome this guitar does um this is just through a little ac drive into a old deluxe reverb <laughs> Of course, these are the old uh, 60s, uh, 70s T tops in here too. That helps the sound a lot. You could use a little fretboard, uh, fretwork, which is a, beyond my pay scale. Here. Off the street for about a week working on this putting it back together and i think it's awesome really beautiful the um the combination of the blue with the with the um the gold is really and the aged uh, the age binding on here just looks really beautiful i think t-tops i put some the big top hat knobs on because i think they look a little better than the um the speed knobs guitar's not too heavy it's right around 10 pounds which is okay that's about the maximum i want to let's pull away but uh it sounds great and it's fun and it was a great project and like I say, it um, it kind of kept my sanity there for a while, concentrating on something else. And it doesn't have to be great. If I want to get it done really perfect, I'll go to a professional guy if I ever want to sell it, uh, anything different than it is. But I think it's quite pretty. It came out a little darker than most of the new Pelhams, too. Anyway, besides all that, um, I'm going to be starting my YouTube channel and doing more licks and ideas and just all things guitar. Not necessarily licks or or uh, anything difficult, just things about guitar. So, pandemic project number 23. This goes in the uh, line with um, my motor scooter I bought, my tomato garden. And uh, I have several other guitars that we'll talk about at another time that I were projects that I found. I found this guitar in a kind of a little store. It was for a couple hundred bucks. It was just a husk and the inlay, which is really beautifully, whoops, beautifully done. Um, here's another guitar I just painted. Uh, it was an old black Korean uh, Telecaster and I painted it kind of gold uh, with, uh, once again, the Re-Ranch gold um, from Gibson, like a gold top would have. But this is a, we can talk about this at another time. It's a, maybe a $300 Telecaster. It's one of the best ones I've ever owned. Uh, the neck is a great, like a soft V shape. And the pickups are these Fender pickups I'll tell you about in another video. But these are the things. Besides a few sessions and mastering my CD and lessons here online and the workshop I do once a month with John Harrington is pretty special too. I should mention that. Uh, John Harrington and I, the guitar player from Steely Dan, he and I do a workshop once a month where we send out charts and uh, backing tracks um, and notes to students who uh, sign up for the class and they send us back their recording of these different songs. It could be footprints, it could be all sorts of different songs. Um, could be a Steely Dan song, could be one of my songs. And we critique them all in, in a Zoom conference. And we've had some special guests along the way. We had Steve Lukather and Robin Ford and Travis Carlton. We have some other guys lined up for the near future um, who are gonna join us. So that's a really fun class. Check that out at alanhines.com. Um, and here we go. Here's my YouTube channel taking off with my Pandemic Pelham, Pandemic Pelham Project. Okay.